spend some time in serving uh, our community in raising the funds to uh, give Bibles all over the world. So, uh, Greg, come on up and share. Thanks, Pastor. Very much. <coughs> ton of nervous energy today, so I might stroll around a little bit. My wife says I need a little more nervous energy at home. I don't know what that's all about. Fine, I'm going home. That's what a woman told her boyfriend in the Central African Republic. It all started because he was going on a business trip and had a very important decision to make. Should he take his wife or his girlfriend? Wife or girlfriend? At the hotel, she unpacked while he sat down. He decided to take the girlfriend. At the hotel, she unpacked while he sat down. And he noticed a blue book sitting on a table, and he picked it up. It was a New Testament placed by the Gideons. Now, I don't know what verses he read, but in just a matter of a few minutes, he was convicted of his sin. So when the girlfriend announced that everything was put away, he looked at her and said, we can't be here like this. This is wrong. So she said, fine, I'm going home. Packed up, called a taxi, and left. But the man had to stay for his meetings. And every spare moment he had, he read that New Testament. When he went home, he took the New Testament with him. As soon as he got home, he ran to find a pastor of a nearby Christian church and asked, can you tell me about the man named Jesus that I've been reading about in this book? They, this man and his family, are Christian, and he is a Gideon. That's pretty amazing stuff, yeah? It's pretty incredible how uh, God's word can change a life in just a few sentences. Wow. The Gideons International is an association of born-again Christian business and professional men. Since 1899, our purpose has been sharing the gospel with the world. Today, we are organized in over 186 countries and publish scripture in more than 80 languages. We place Bibles in designated traffic lanes of life, places like hotels, motels, hospitals, and convalescent homes. We also distribute New Testaments to students in schools and colleges, to prisoners, and to police, fire, and medical personnel, as well as men and women in the armed forces. As members of local churches, Gideons visit congregations to let you know how God is using the seeds that we are sowing. We are an extension of the local church and work in partnership with believers like you around the world. By God's grace, we placed and distributed over 66 million testaments last year. And since 1908, we've placed more than 1.2 billion scriptures around the world. You might also be interested to know that we've distributed hundreds of thousands of testaments to military personnel in the Middle East, including Iraq. The promise of Isaiah 55.11 is fulfilled, and God's word does not return void, as men, women, and boys and girls come to Christ through reading a scripture placed by Gideon. 55.11 says this, So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hence, a man going back to his wife and giving his life to Christ. My word will not return to me void. I'd like to share a couple more testimonies with you, and then I'll get out of the way and let the real man speak. There was a, uh, he was about to be baptized, uh, this officer in the Romanian army. And uh, he, uh, he stopped the ceremony. And he asked the congregation, do you remember me? And of course, there was a lot of looks of consternation on their faces. He said, I was here about 10 years ago. And I interrupted your baptism. And I had, I stopped the ceremony. And not only did I stop the ceremony, I had a lot of you people thrown in prison. I'm here today to tell you that I received a Bible. And because of that Bible, I'm here today to give my life to Christ. He was baptized that day and became a Gideon later. Amazing stuff. We all agree how important it is.
is for people to have the Word of God. It's such a simple idea. Giving a New Testament to someone or putting a Bible in a hotel room, yet it's an incredibly effective way to share the love of God. Like the night Elliot Ozawit planned to kill himself. It was Christmas Eve and his wife had just locked him out of the house. But who could blame her? He'd not been a good husband or father. For years he had traveled the world, pursued his own success, and indulged in all kinds of immoral activities. He was away from home even as his wife struggled to raise two of their grandchildren and cope with breast cancer at the same time. So there was Elliot in a hotel room on Christmas Eve with a gun. But, the, uh, but on the TV was an open Gideon Bible. And this irritated Elliot. So he whacked it off the TV onto the floor. And it landed open. And so he proceeded to try and kick it underneath the bed. He didn't want to look at it. But fortunately, it was one of those hotel rooms where, have you ever been to those where they've got the solid boards underneath the bed? Yeah. And he couldn't kick it underneath the bed. He tried and tried. Finally, he got frustrated. He reached down and picked it up. Started reading. A few days later, he went to church with his wife. He spent three days in that hotel room. But on Sunday, he attended church with his wife and gave his life to Christ. But that's not the end of the testimony. Elliot Ozawit was called by God into ministry and is now a pastor in North Carolina. Does that, does that raise the hair on the back of your neck? I fail every single day to live the life that God wants me to live. Every single day I fail. I do my best. I wake up in the morning. I intend to do what God wants me to do. But I've never gotten to the point where I felt like killing myself. It gives me great comfort to know if I got to that position, God would put me in a hotel room where the beds were solid. That's amazing stuff. Somebody's life was about to be changed. It's not that. And God's word was there for him. I'm not, I'm not singing the praises of the Gideons right now, guys. I'm singing the praises of God's word. That is amazing stuff. <clears throat> so when, so where will we go next? Even though we're placing or distributing more than two scriptures every second, the need is even greater. You may be wondering how you can help. Our number one need is for prayer. The Gideons aren't so, uh, aren't so foolish as to think that God needs our money. He doesn't need our money. He needs our willingness to go. Each one of those little scriptures that you got in fourth grade, these little guys right here, yours was probably red or brown or maybe even orange, depending on how old you are. Blaze, I'll bet yours is orange, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, those little testaments are $1.35. And whatever we take as an offering goes to buy and ship Bibles. Okay? None of the administrative cost of the Gideons is, comes from an offering. It all comes from our duty as members. So first and foremost, we'd like prayer. Pray for us to be in uh, churches, presenting how, we, uh, how we're doing around the world. Pray for us to be held accountable. And finally, pray for us to be allowed into countries that we're not allowed in yet. There are certain countries out there that just won't allow the Gideons in. Second of all, we'd appreciate your financial support. Um, if you can, that's great. If you can't, that's great too. Like I said, prayer is more important to us than your money. So, and then finally, um, we ask that if you are a Christian businessman and you are a member of a local church, that you'd consider becoming a Gideon. If uh, any of those things are of interest to you, uh, we would love to uh, we'd love to help you out. And uh, I'll be standing at the back of the church with an open Bible and, uh, and a, uh, a blessing for each one of you. Thank you very much for having me, Pastor. Appreciate the time. And uh, thanks, guys, for not throwing anything at me. <laughs> Have a blessed day. So. But he uh, was pretty interesting, so I wasn't really paying attention. But uh, thanks.
next group. It's really exciting that people know the power of the Word of God to take part of their busy schedule, busy, busy schedule to uh, think of serving the Lord in this way. And we hear stories and stories of how the Word of God has
help set up for a wedding, 150 chairs, had to go to the fire hall and gather all these chairs and, and set them up there. And thanks to Isaac and Hannah and uh, Ron, and I hope I don't leave anybody else out that helped out, but uh, we set up these chairs for this wedding and how do you know what, what it, if you know what happened Friday night with all that rain? I was thinking, no way can they have a wedding. <laughs> Ground's gonna be too muddy. And I had all these negative feelings, you know. Of course, I had to kind of give up my time down in Scotts Bluff for the Irish show, too. But then I, I had to stop and think, and I thought, who am I trying to please anyway? My attitude stunk. And I had to stop and think. And that's why I, the message today that I, that I think I'm gonna to try to relate to. It's not just for you, but it's for me too. Who are you trying to please anyway? I mean, how many of you struggle that, with that, you know, in your daily life? Is, is when you do things in life, who are you trying to please? Are you trying to have your relatives or your family praise you for the great parent you are or great uncle or aunt you are, whatever? But you know, our goal as Christians should be that we, like in Romans the 12th chapter, are a living sacrifice that is pleasing to God. This is our spiritual service of worship. Again, be not conformed any longer to the patterns of this world. Being like everybody else, but be transformed. Be different than everybody else. And again, it's sick and, I, I get sick and tired right when I pick up the paper. I Maybe mean, I shouldn't read the paper anymore, but when I look, pick up the paper and I see how society has conformed to the rest of the world and how they think that they can change God's Word to make it say what they want it to say. Taking evil and making it look good. How many of you see that in our society today? That, that society is trying to say, well, the Bible really doesn't say that. The Bible um, was written a long time ago, written by some people that were ignorant. Have you heard that before? No. Well, either you're going to believe that the Word of God is the Word of God, that God inspired men to write the Word of God, and it is without error, and is the truth. What is truth anyway? Truth is unchanging. It's constant. It never changes. But yet people are trying to take their ideas that they have that maybe they've learned through society's um, behavior and try to blend in with the culture and they forget that God's word is true and his word is explaining the character of who God is. And he, his desire in, in the commandments that he gives us is to become like him. We are to be conformed in his image. Can you imagine what God does when he looks upon us and he sees us trying to conform with everybody else? It's so sad. <coughs> in Galatians, the Apostle Paul says, uh, Apostle Paul sent uh, not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brothers and sisters with me to the churches in Galatia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Anybody say it? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Why did God come to this earth in the form of Jesus? To bring glory to the Father and to reconcile his people to himself. He says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Eventually, some people are throwing you into a confusion or trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if I or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, 
Let them be under God's curse. Now this is pretty serious business. What is he saying? He's saying, let them be damned if they are preaching something different from what the Word of God teaches. And it really sickens me that the church of today has conformed to what the people want to hear and they are preaching a different gospel. And the Apostle Paul says, you know what? There's going to be some eternal consequences to those who change the word of God. As we have already said, so now I say it again, if anybody, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, then let them be under God's curse. Now am I trying to win the approval of human beings? Or of God? Think about it. Why are these people doing what they're doing, trying to change the gospel of Jesus Christ? Who are they trying to please? It's not God. You think God is pleased when people alter the truth? What is it called when they're teaching something different than the truth? Idolatry. Huh? Idolatry. Three-letter word. Lie. It's called a lie. They don't say, I'm, tell, I'm teaching you a lie, so you better listen to me, right? Because I know who would listen to a lie. But they say, this is the truth. You came from the little one-cell animal, and you became a fish and crawled onto the land, and then your ancestors were monkeys. <laughs> and they're teaching that in our school system, and what are we as Christians doing about it? Nothing. Nothing. And we kind of throw our hands, oh, there's nothing that we can do. You know, if all the Christians in our community would get to the Board of Education and stand up and say, you know what, we'll let you teach your, your evolution theory, but let's, let's teach intelligent design as an alternative, because this is what we believe in as Christians. You know the sad thing? When I talk to Christians, they believe in the theory of evolution. Well, no wonder this world is so messed up. Because even the ones that should know the truth is believing the lie. They're listening to a different gospel. And we are just sitting back and watching that happen. He says, or am I trying to please people? If, if, if I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. It's not a made-up thing that one man says, you know what, this is what I think uh, truth is, so I'm going to write this and, and uh, teach this to people. No, mankind did not do this. And it's kind of funny when I talk to people about this, there's a lady that I play cards with, and, and, and I tell her, you know, uh, teaching her the truth, and she goes, oh, well, just some of those stupid guys wrote this thing, and they know what they're talking about. How many of you know people like that, that don't believe that the, the word of God is true? They think it's some kind of fairy tale. But how ignorant is that, calling us ignorant, because they haven't read the truth and studied the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Set you free. What? Set you, set you free. Set you free. And all these people are in bondage when it's really so simple if they would just surrender to the word of God. Acknowledge who God is. It would set them free. I did it not to receive it from any man or was I taught it. Rather, I received it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, to be an apostle, an apostle had to re receive the teaching directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember who Paul used to be, right? He went out to destroy Christianity because he thought that the, the Judaism was the only way and, and that you had to be a Jew and Christians were totally going against God. 
But then when he got struck down with that bright light that Jesus saw, so, why are you persecuting me? And evidently Jesus revealed the truth to Paul, to Saul who became Paul. Changed his whole life. Not only changed Paul's life, but changed the lives of many, many people. Because you and I have read the words. God's love is, is never failing. Remember that He wishes that none should perish. <coughs> but all come to repentance. Who are you trying to please? We should all be pleasing, trying to please God because His love is just poured upon us. In 2 Timothy, in the presence of God and Je Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead. And view of, appear, of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Do you think that time might be at hand. Yeah. yeah. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myth. And it really saddens me that one of my good friends from Hawaii struggled with an issue for many years. Then he went and found a church that believes the way he wanted to be. And it's totally turned away from the truth. He has exchanged the truth for the lie. He gathered teachers to teach him what he wanted to hear. And he says, well, that Apostle Paul was ignorant. He didn't know what he was talking about. When you start criticizing the Word of God and says, well, this part is no good, this part's okay, this part's, well, kind of questionable, You might as well just say the whole thing is a lie. Because what is a lie? A lie is a distortion from the truth. It's either truth or it's not truth at all. You understand that? But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of evangelists, discharge all the duties of your ministry, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time for my departure is near. What is Paul saying? He's going to die. He's saying, you know what? I'm going to give him my all, my whole life, and all that I do, my preaching, my life, is to be pleasing to God, not to men. And I am pouring myself into you guys. I want you guys to know the truth. And I know that we're, you know, he, he's, he's saying that, I, I know that my time is short. I'm not going to be here very long. They might put me to death. But I want you, before I get put to death, I want you to know so that you can stand up for the truth too. I have fought the good fight. I have finished. Just a little bit, last Sunday we, I went to uh, Brother Mink's uh, celebration of 50 years in ministry. And here's a man who, he doesn't give up, he's like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> we didn't go got into this car accident and he seems to just keep on getting up and moving on, serving the community in a helpful way. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. You see, the toil is not in vain. Just 
like the songs that were sung today. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid out somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckoned me from heaven's open door. And I can't make it in this world anymore. <clears throat> the moment, the little time that we have on the earth is just like that. And again, the older we get, the more we realize how short time is. In just a little bit, time will be no more. And we'll be there receiving the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory. I think the best part of it all, I mean, you've seen and heard of stories about what heaven's going to be like. For my brother, it's an endless too. I used to think that, but I don't know. Playing basketball probably in my other thing. <laughs> Up there having a great time, but you know what? Everything, the, what it looks like, whatever, it really doesn't matter too much to me. I think the best part of it is living in the presence of Almighty God. Wow, what could be better than that? There is no need for light, the sun or the moon, the stars, because Jesus is going to be there. He says, I am the light. What is hell? Absence of justice. Darkness. Do we really believe in hell? Yeah. Do we know that there's a lot of our own loved ones that are headed that way, that way and we're not doing anything about it? Galatians 6, brothers and sisters, if, any, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves or you will be tempted. Carry each other's burden, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own.
You see, trying to please God, you know, man or, or whoever you're trying to please, you know, the reward is going to be instant, right? They may not even give you no reward because they think that you're trying to get the praise for yourself. They might entertain you, but you see how pride can get in the way? Easy. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Colossians 3.17 says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, how much of it should you do in the name of Jesus? All of it. Oh, whatever you do, working at the hardware store, working on the farm, planting seed, cultivating, going to school. Whatever you do in your actions, don't do it like you're pleasing, trying to please people. Yeah, you might be pleasing people. If you're pleasing God, you know what? There's some people that are not going to like it. And they're going to persecute you for it. Do it unto God. And your reward will be great. Giving thanks to God the Father through Him. There's a song that 